You know, you know, you know. Good morning, good afternoon, Cleveland family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house. I'm expecting a, a package, so I'm going to have to get up and pause this when it happens. But if the shooting and the massacre that happened in New Zealand doesn't give you all um, a better understanding of what it feels like to be under siege and under terror by white supremacists who are afraid of their own shadows, um, then you really are not living in a reality. And these are the kind of people that I don't like to talk to. I don't like to talk to people that, that, that tell me stupid stuff like, Oh, well, just don't think about the race, you know, aspect because we're all the same and all that kind of stupid stuff when they're not the ones under siege. And that's why it's very difficult for me to relate to a lot of people that's out here um, saying that they're really doing stuff for people's mental health and they see the supremacy and they see and they say, well, you don't even see the 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 tone of their um, content addressing the issue for what it really is. Even though they can get on there and people can get on there and talk about all kinds of narcissism and, well, I think we should ignore the narcissist and go gray rock. If y'all think y'all can go gray rock behind these kind of crazies, then you're sadly mistaken. I'm working on... Um, Well, proving, and I don't think, I mean, well, it's not taking a lot, but to compile all these thoughts together and to put it in a book form, showing people how this 1% that started this country is the same narcissistic personality disorder people that have uh, basically evolved to the psychosis that you see on the planet. Now, let me see if you can follow me here. First of all, you can have all kinds of men in the room talking about, you know, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they got slaves. Then you already know that they're disassociative. And so for white people to not even come to grips with that right there, let you know that they're not reality-based. It, when you deal with a white person that can deal with that part, then they're okay because they can at least, even though it may hurt, they can take, um, they can take the truth basically, because all of this stuff right here, like these uh, um, assassinations and uh, mass shootings, or isolated incidents and uh, marching in uh, Virginia, all these things are just is really a form of being gaslit by everybody that's involved. So especially if you're a, a, a African American, I'm saying a descendant of a slave, and you listening to all this stuff, and you are really trying to heal from the madness in your immediate family, and then you have to step outside your door and deal with this kind of because you're on high alert. You're you're on high alert. Not only have your listen, you born into a situation where you're high alert. That's the madness of it all. When we're born, our cortisol levels are already elevated and all types of stuff from the um the madness that these people have put on us. And to hear them think now that they put all this up in their fear has gotten them to a point now where all they can do is just kill. They're teaching their babies how to kill. That they're running out of bullets because they bought all the artillery up. They want to just shoot. They want to raise war. That because they're afraid. They are afraid, and that's why I continue to say things like white supremacy has hurt white people worse, worse than it's hurt us. Because being on this end gave us the ability to study them and see what is wrong with these people or what their psychic is like. And 
how can somebody lay down with you and call you nigger and do X, Y, Z and do it, but then give you, impregnate you. Total psychosis. Um, we've had to deal with stuff from these group of people that just is not normal. So now you've got a president who can't really call what has happened in New Zealand what it is. He doesn't think white nationalism is on the rise. And I'm not blaming all this on Donald Trump. In fact, I thank the ancestors for Donald Trump. I really do. Because Donald Trump is bringing out the real deal in people. Some people like they drinks watered down, you know, so much that you can't taste the alcohol. Some people like they're straight up with no chasing. Some people would want to hear their truth straight and let's get to the point and let's cut out all this bull crap. Because that's what has been going on in America and that's what we've been experiencing. And for y'all to sit back and think that you can um, just really dream this problem away. I do know in my spirit, in my heart of hearts that there's only two operating forces in the universe, and that's love and fear. And both of them are extremely powerful. But right now, these white supremacist terrorists are in fear of us. They're in fear of, of a black planet. They're in fear of a brown planet. They see their numbers going down. They feel all their fears are totally irrational because they've been ruling the world. They've been ruling. They've created slavery. They created the madness. And what it is, is they, you know, no lie can live forever. No lie can live forever. And you don't have the capacity in your heart to try to chip this stuff away and make it an even playing field. You don't know how to do that because you're too arrogant, you're too pompous, and the experiment of America is going to fail. I'm, I'm, I'm 99.9 percent sure. Dr. King said that he had feared that he had led his people into a burning house. I fear that America won't make it ten years. I, she can't make it like this. I don't think she can make it. She can't. And to just want a race war. For all of y'all who say, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're black, that's totally sick. We don't have no army. We we it'll be mass genocide. Okay? We don't have an army. We don't have um, any kind of uh, political backing. We're really out here by ourselves. Nobody give a damn about us. Okay? So you can't win no war that way, because that's you're gonna keep on doing what you're doing, feeding up your own self. Fighting your own self, okay, and that's what we find ourselves doing. We, you know, we we're just going mad. So, if we don't, and I don't think we can again, can't turn it around because the fear is too great. And I think I did a, a stop. Get back from back there. Come from back there. Come on. I think I did a story a little while ago that talked about um, just how this slavery and white supremacy and all this stuff has affected everybody. You know, a lot of black people think that white people are not affected by this. Can't you imagine how messed up their mind must be to have been running the world and now that that world that they've been running is becoming more and more brown. And that they're exposed for all of their weakness and insecurity. We already know, knew it. But now it's just such an um, exposure of their craziness that it's almost impossible for even a blind man to disregard what we have been saying about them forever. The only thing they can do now is either act like they don't see it, turn a blind eye, which is sad. 
or they have to get on board. Either way it go, every generation has to pay his own, his own price. And so, for us, we got to keep keep on pushing, keep on moving, and keep pushing. For those of us in our families that have the craziness in the families, we have to keep on pushing. We have to do what's best for us. We have to stay diligent. We have to continue to try to heal. But the main thing you understand is you might have to go no contact. And so if you have to go no contact with a group of people, that is just the same. You might have to go no contact with them until you find out what their intentions are, who the hell they really be. You might, you know, we it's pretty much that way anyway. Well, I'm sorry. But if you true to yourself, then you know you will have to evaluate some of your practices and the way you see some things because the world is different. And it's changed. And we will be fools to sit up here and act like it hasn't. Jesus can't fix this one. And God has no feet and arms but ours. Another African proverb is, when elephants fight, the grass suffers. I'll see y'all next time in the next video. Bye-bye.